Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the 5 Rounds Podcast, the only podcast out there with the cardio for those deep water championship rounds. I am Mags and I have literally just finished watching UFC Fight Night, Barbosa versus Chikadze uh, from the UFC Apex Centre. So let's quickly just power through these these prelims. So we started the night with Mana Martinez picking up the decision against Guido Canete. Uh, in the bantamweight division then in the featherweight division we got a first round sub for Pat Sabatini against Jamal Emmers um, the women's flyweight division we get another decision with uh, JJ Aldrich picking up the win over Vanessa Demopoulos going into the light, uh, heavyweight division we get a knockout by Dustin Jacobet on Darren Stewart um, in the middleweight division a controversial result with uh, Wellington Turman picking up the uh, the the split decision of a uh, smiley Sam Alva, even though he actually had two points deducted in the final round due to air parking multiple times in 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 that uh, fight, uh, Wellington uh, pushed his fingers into Sam's eyes, and then we ended the prelims with uh, Alicia De Chico, uh getting KO'd in 17 seconds uh, by Abdul Razak Hassan. So we uh, on the main card we had six fights and we opened with Gerald Mearshart taking on Mahmoud Muradov uh, and this was your typical kind of a wrestler taking on a striker with uh, Gerald Mearshart obviously wanting the, the fight to go to ground uh, so he can uh, control uh, and dictate the, the direction of the of the fight and there was quite a few times when uh, in um, in the first round he, he was tagged and his, his first thought was to go down to ground and, and try and get uh, try and get the fight where he feels the most comfortable uh but um um uh, was was not willing to uh to engage on the ground uh and waited for for uh, Mershot to get back on his feet and was really kind of lighting him up tagging him clipping him uh really wobbling uh Gerald Mershot and it, it's um it it was really kind of uh, going to be a long day at the office for for GM3 and uh, there was a, an, a point where he gets a little bit of a recre- uh, reprieve where he uh, he accidentally lands a, a shot to the cup uh, and um, uh, Meridoff collapses uh, down to the to the uh, canvas. Takes a few a uh, few minutes to to uh, to get um, his his bearings and starts getting back to to the action. And when when they start fighting again, Meerschaft lands a good a good uh, left hand of his own. Uh, follows it up with a high kick and we see uh, that uh, Marunov has actually wobbled for a little bit but quickly recovers, uh, lands a massive overhead, overhead right with uh, the main shot firing back with uh, some big shots of his own um, he, he ended the round with quite a bit of pressure uh, but overall uh, Marunov really had a, a good showing for himself against uh against Mayshart in this first round. And in this uh, second round, Mayshart tries to dictate the pace uh, early on and gets landed with a, a massive right. Uh, wobbles him, but he was uh, he was able to, to stay up right. Actually, shoot off a, a kick, a high kick, but that gets blocked. Uh, Mayshart uh, wants to take the fight to the ground because, again, he, he's out of his comfort zone here on here on the, uh, on the feet. Uh, but he's just... Uh, Carried away by by Muridov, who uh, follows up with a low kick for good measure. Uh, Mayshot goes for the sweep, but uh, is unable to keep him on the ground. Uh, and then it, we we just see uh, both guys just absolutely standing and banging, uh, really trying to just uh, beat the brakes off each other. Uh, Mayshot uses this uh, kind of uh, exchange to be able to slip round, uh, take the back get the fire finally to the floor uh, and then it, it's it's all over but the shouting for for Muridov uh, Mishot is able to trap the arm um Muridov tries to uh to peel away but um Mishot is able to uh to get his hands behind the neck able to squeeze and uh Muridov after all the the effort he put in in the in in the eight or so minutes of of this fight, he has to has to tap out and uh, a great kind of comeback victory for Gerald Mayshot there in the in the middleweight division. 
Next, we go into Michael Gilmore versus Andre uh, Pretorsky. And this is uh, two fighters that, that both wanted to kind of uh, use their ground game uh, in the in the first round. We see uh, uh, Pretorsky really kind of dominate for, for the majority of the round. He has four and a half minutes total uh, ground control in, in this round. Um, getting getting the, the, the fight to the ground pretty quickly. Uh, able to... Um, to secure that that takedown after uh, kicks to the body from Gilmore, uh, and he he's just able to just dominate whilst on the ground, staying really heavy, uh, passing uh, from uh, from uh, top control to side control, uh, landing punches uh, and knees. Um, there's a, a point where Gilmore gets actually gets to his feet, uh, but Petros, uh, Petroski stays with him, uh, lifts him back up, slams him to the canvas, uh, and and again um, Petroski tries to um, Gilmore tries to uh, escape, and Petroski uh, gives him the 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 German suplex. Uh, very lucky to not actually smash his own head into the canvas, but uh, yeah, it was a very uh, dominant first round in terms of, of wrestling and 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 uh, groundwork from uh, Petrovsky. Uh, going into the second round, and again, Petrovsky was was really quite dominant. Uh, this time landing more uh, shots on the feet, landing uh, uh, head kicks and and straight punches. But you could see that this uh, this effort had started to take its toll a little bit on him, and he uh, he was taking much more deeper breaths, which gave uh, uh, Gilmore a little bit more of a chance to to maybe uh, get some um, offense of his own in. Uh, it doesn't follow up on it though, and there's a there's a point where uh, Petrovsky slips on a kick, and Gilmore just uh, allows him to to stand, and he's more. Uh, more content to just be on the outside kind of uh, uh, just evading shots and, and waiting for a counter Petrovsky would carry on throwing those those kicks uh, just to get the range and then uh, powering forward with, with the with the hands and Gilmore started to uh, to counter a little bit landing some uh, kicks of his own uh, some shots of his own uh, there's a, a big left hand for, for Petrovsky uh, which uh, is countered by Gilmore who tries to uh, to uh, land a left of his own but uh, Petrovsky uh, ducks and is able to drag the, the fight to the floor gets a side control then starts with the knee on the belly a little bit too late for for any real kind of a dominance on the floor but it's just another case of uh of Petrovsky able to con uh, control uh, Gilmore when uh, the action goes to the floor Coming into the third round, uh, again Petrovsky tries to uh, dominate the centre of the of the octagon, landing shots, uh, goes in for a takedown uh, pretty much straight away, uh, gets side control. Uh, Gilmore actually tries to get hold of uh, Petrovsky's neck, uh, is is unable to uh, really kind of lock it in, and then Petrovsky steps over uh, to mount, pops his head out of the of the uh, the submission attempt. Gets Gilmore's head up against the cage, um, which means is is not enough room to uh, to defend uh, Petrovsky with uh, a couple of the those body shots to confuse and kind of uh, distract his opponent. Um, is trying to essentially turn uh, Michael Gilmore over so he can uh, he can get the uh, take his back and 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 get the the rear naked choke, but. Uh, Gilmore is able to roll and create a little bit of space uh, only for, for Petrovsky to just shove him down to the ground again and um, uh, get back into mounted position. Uh, Gilmore, um, he, he's really struggling to, to stand up but the, the, the huge weight difference between uh, him and uh, Petrovsky is really uh, weighing down on, on, on Michael Gilmore. Uh, Petrovsky then starts targeting the left arm, wraps it around the face, uh, pounding away with with uh, elbows. Uh, looks like we're getting the, a submission, um, but uh, the referee Jason Herzog stops the the fight due to the punches, and uh, Andrea Petrovsky picks up the the TKO victory. So then going into the third fight on this main card, uh, Kevin Lee. Um, taking on Daniel Rodriguez, Kevin Lee making his uh, return to uh, welterweight, looking for a little bit more success perhaps than he had uh, in his last run there. Uh, unfortunately for him, he uh, he doesn't get it. He 
he loses this fight by unanimous decision uh 29 28 all the way uh pretty much across the board um his his best round was probably the first round he landed some uh some really good shots um he was the one who set the pace uh landing good shots to the body uh firing uh high kicks uh rodriguez did land some some uh some shots of his own uh but when uh rodriguez was kind of uh, formulating some offense um Kevin Lee was able to uh, slip inside, get the single leg, uh, and and get the ground uh, far to the ground. Um, he wasn't really able to to do much uh, damage from the the position he was in, with uh, with uh, having the the shoulder pressure and uh, Rodriguez uh, trapping him in in half guard. But the the round ends with uh, with Kevin Lee on top, and I think uh, that kind of may have give Kevin Lee a little bit of a um, a boost, thinking that uh, this fight was was pretty much in the bag. Uh, unfortunately for him, uh, uh, Daniel Rodriguez is a very wily fighter and he proved that coming into uh, the second round. He landed a hell of a lot more shots here. His volume really, really turned up. Um, Kevin Lee, again, went uh, t- for the takedown when he when he was taking damage, uh, but this time it was, it was sprawled. Uh, Kevin Lee able to get the takedown on the second attempt, though, um, and whilst Kevin Lee tried to... Uh, get back control uh, Rodriguez was able to uh, spin with him and uh, take top control uh, this caused uh, Trevor, uh, Kevin Lee to panic a little bit and the fight returns back to the feet and we see um, Rodriguez uh, chopping away at the legs landing a lot of straights um, which which kind of really hurts um, Kevin Lee to the point where he's, he's wobbled uh, drops to the, the canvas uh, Rodriguez uh, goes to follow up and Kevin Lee uh, using that kind of uh, muscle memory wrestling uh, base that he's got uh, grabs hold of uh, out of uh, one of Rodriguez's legs for dear life to, to stop essentially being, being KO'd by, by uh, Daniel uh, he's able to uh, work his way around and um, survive till the, 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 the klaxon so we get a, a third round and again, in this third, both guys coming out really to to uh, press the the pace and both uh, landing some some huge shots. Uh, Kevin Lee throws a, a kick, which is caught by Rodriguez, and then he's followed up with a uh, a nice uh, le- left hand right hand combination. Uh, Kevin Lee uh, uh, eats those shots, and and he reacts pretty well. Um, but it's 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 here where where Rodriguez starts to really chop at the legs uh landing some uh some huge haymaker shots as well um Kevin Lee again as he did in the in the last two rounds he uh sensed the danger went to shoot for the for the takedown um didn't get it again we got this sprawl uh but eventually uh Kevin Lee uh using that wrestling base is able to finally get the the fight to the ground but not for long, Rodriguez quickly up on his feet. Um, Lee is led on his back. Rodriguez is uh, is grinding his way um, uh, in in the clinch on the on the floor, uh, able to to pull away. Um, very kind of a nervous position for for Rodriguez to be in, uh, but he's able to to get back out. Um, we see a flying knee from Kevin Lee, which uh, totally misses, uh, and then we see Rodriguez just landing jab after jab after jab. Uh, Lee uh, shoots in, and this t- this time it's a really really well timed sprawl. Uh, no no way that this is going back to the ground. Um, Rodriguez landing some big big shots. Kevin Lee tries um, um, an interesting tactic of dropping his hands to to bait Rodriguez into uh, into firing more, uh, which doesn't really work that much because he gets hit a lot more. Uh, coming to the end of the round, Lee uh, Kevin Lee throws a, a huge high kick which uh, which ju- just misses, uh, and then the klaxon goes for the for the end of the fight and. Uh, the judges all give it 29 28 to to Daniel Rodriguez so again um Kevin Lee unsuccessful on his on his um dalliance with with the welterweight division 
So next we've got the first of our Ultimate Fighter Finals. This one in the Bantamweight division. Uh, Brady Hardstand taking on uh, Ricky Tercios. And we get a little bit of a promo package uh, f- between the two. Um, uh, this one ends up being uh, a split decision, a very close fight, but Ricky Tercios uh, picking up the the victory. Uh, first round, uh, I think it was uh, probably Brady Hardstand's best round. Um, very fast pace from both guys. Both guys really wanted to to make their mark on this bantamweight division. Uh, really kind of light each other up. Uh, plenty of uh, of good wrestling. Plenty of good uh, scrambling uh, and some big shots. Uh, from from both uh, fighters, uh, really talented um, um, submission attempts by Hardstand and uh, for uh, submission defense by by uh, Ricky Tercios as well. Um, really uh, talented, high level skills, and I think it just shows how much uh, MMA has evolved. That, that these guys are coming through uh, from the Ultimate Fighter with uh, very well rounded uh, ground and uh, and um, uh, on the feet games. So coming into the second, uh, again another kind of razor thin decision. Um, this this round could have gone either way. Uh, both fighters really wanted to in, uh, engage well. Again, it goes to ground pretty quickly. Uh, with Hardstand uh, shooting for the takedown after uh, being able to stuff a takedown of, of Tertius's. This one doesn't stay on the ground as much. There's a lot more uh, kind of on the feet action um, with uh, Ricky Tertius really turning up uh, his, his output, landing more kicks and more hooks. He's able to uh, to um, land some some big shots, uh, which uh, forces Hardstand to go for more takedowns. Uh, gets uh, gets into side control, but he's again he's not able to keep Ricky Tercios down as long as he did. Um, he attempts to go for the neck and the guillotine, which are both not there. Looks for the triangle again, not there. Uh, we uh, see uh, Tertius get back to his feet, land some more shots, and again, like I said, this was a very razor uh, tart uh, round. Could have been given anyway, um, and again, same with the with the third round. These two really brought it and really wanted to make a statement. Um, there's um, uh, some some big rats uh, from Tertius, which hurts hard stand. Um, Tertius tried to to press the pace and and and, and score uh, some big points. Uh, hard stand wanted to uh, desperation go for a takedown, which he, he ends up uh, getting. Um, Tertius is able to force himself uh, with his back to the cage to uh, to uh, defend any attempts at submission. Uh, the 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 fight ends up uh, getting back to the feet, um, and again we we see uh, Ricky Tertius kind of working it from working from the outside. Uh, Hardstand really increased his output in this round, uh, throwing a lot more punches, uh, and we see that he's actually took uh, some big shots and he started bleeding from the nose, and that kind of uh, peps up uh, Ricky Tertius and he starts pressing now. Uh, throwing big shots, uh, high stand with a, a flying knee which just barely misses. About a minute to go, we see high stand go for it, go to the go for the his, uh, ground game again, but the 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 takedown is stuffed, and then we just see. 30 40 seconds of just standing and banging by the both guys uh great great fight really kind of impressive by both but there has to be a winner and ricky tercios is your bantamweight um the ultimate fighter 29 tournament winner uh so going into the core main event and the second of our uh, the Ultimate Fighter Finals, this time is in the middleweight division. Uh, Brian Battle, uh, Brian Pooh Bear Battle, as his nickname is, taking on uh, Gilbert Urbina. And this was uh, this one didn't go the distance, but it was surely uh, still a very interesting fight. So these two uh, wanted to beat the living piss out of each other, landing huge, huge shots. Uh, Urbina landed a big shot very early on, and you could see that Brian Battle was hurt. Uh, Abina then picks him up and slams him to the floor, really kind of uh, just 
forcing the air out of his chest. Um, Brian Battle is able to to uh, survive and get back to a seated position. We get a, a tease of a guillotine, which is not there. Uh, Brian Battle trying to work his way back to the feet, but he's quickly dragged back down by, uh, by Gilbert Abina. Uh, Abina um, starts really laying punches. Uh, we see uh, that Brian Battle is able to force his way uh, from the floor back onto the feet, but his uh, his mouthpiece um, is uh, is f- is thrown from the cage. It literally f- comes out of his mouth and flies out of the cage. We uh, because it's clear um, Herb Dean didn't see it uh, um, leaving the cage, and uh, the commissioner ends up tossing it back in as the fight carried on. Uh, Brian Battle, uh, it seems to have uh, kind of woke up a little bit from uh, from that that horrific beating he took in the in the early uh, in the early stage and started really swinging back. Uh, Abina takes the the ground uh, the fight to the ground again, and we see that uh, that Brian Battle is again having to defend himself up against the uh, the fence. We see uh, some knees from from both guys. Um, shots landed in the clinch. Um, Brian Battle ends up pulling away and uh, landing some shots from range. Um, Abina with uh, some tidy elbows, uh, and then we see that uh, Brian uh, Brian Battle finally gets his mouthpiece back when he sat down at the end of the stool. <laughs> Coming in, into the second round, and uh, Brian Battle knows he's got uh, an uphill battle to, pardon the pun, to to do, uh, and he comes out swinging, landing uh, some really nice tidy leg kicks. Uh, Gilbert um, is is still moving well, and he's got some uh, some power, especially in that right hand. He uh, he lands a, a huge shot, goes for the takedown, but uh, this time. Uh, um, Battle is able to uh, to defend the takedown, uh, but we see uh, Abina using that uh, as a as a, a way to get to to get to take the back. Uh, he tries to jump on the on onto Brian uh, Battle's back, kind of like a almost in a backpack position, but uh, it's not there. And we see um, um, Brian Battle really defending that pretty well. Uh, Abina sees that it's it's not going to work. Lets it go and starts landing more shots. Uh, but Battle seems to be um, he seems to have a much harder chin in this round. Uh, ends up uh, countering with his own takedown. Gets the back. Uh, locks in the the chalk. And Abina is in a world of trouble. Uh, you see him trying uh, to. Um, pull uh, the hands away from the neck see that Brian, Brian Battle has again lost his mouthpiece he really needs to kind of uh, um, get some the right equipment for 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 his his mouth but uh, he locks in this uh, this rear naked choke uh, Abina is unable to to uh, escape and he ends up getting uh Getting the tap, it, it looked like the the squeeze wasn't exactly on the th- on the neck uh, and was perhaps more of a almost like a face lock, but um, they still hurt as much. And and uh, uh, Brian Battle is your um, middleweight uh, Ultimate Fighter twenty nine champion. So let's get into this main uh, fight: uh, Edson Barbosa versus Jika Kadaz- uh, Chikadza, both. Uh, uh, amazing featherweight fighters, uh, Edson Barbosa, an absolute legend in these streets, and uh, uh, Giga Chikadza, unbeaten in his UFC career, six and also uh, going into this fight, um, thirteen and two, the kind of fighter that everybody really wants to avoid in the UFC's uh, featherweight division. Um, he's been pushing for a tight shot for for quite a long time, and uh, just doesn't seem to uh, to be able to get it. So uh, a win for him would really kind of solidify that position, uh, and for Edson it would be a, kind of a return to glory after uh, uh, a stop start uh, career recently in, in his uh, in his UFC uh, career. But we we open the the first fight, and these two guys are known for kicking. Edson Barboza, the someone who has has legitimately TKO'd people with leg kicks. He's just that brutal. And and Giga Chikadze uh, does the same kind of thing. He's known as the person who kicks the shit out of people. Uh, so we're going to see a hell of a lot of kicks to the body, kicks to the legs, uh, high kicks. 
and these two guys do not disappoint. But what they also do bring is, is things like flying knees, and we see Chikadze uh, attempting a couple of those in the first round. Uh, we also see he's got a, a very uh, good uh, attack with his with his jabs as well and, and, and his rats. Um, so this this first round is very much a tit-for-tat, uh, with uh, Chikadze probably landing the better shots, probably uh, landing the, the harder kicks. He's able to... Uh, to uh, land spinning kicks and like I said he threw the, the flying knee um, going into the second Barboza uh, coming out a little bit more aggressive but uh, that plays into Chica, uh, Chikadze's game and he's able to land more uh, of those outside um, low leg kicks uh, he's able to switch stances uh, quite freely landing lefts then rights hard kicks to the body um, Barbosa landed uh, some some big kicks of his own, uh, scored with some huge right hands to really kind of uh, put this uh, this round certainly uh, um, uh, as a uh, as a pickem in the judges judges eyes. Really kind of opened up more than he did in the first round, and for me, he he probably took this second round with uh, landing some some big digs to the body to to close up. Um, and some uh, some those, those gorgeous leg kicks that he's is 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 well known for. Uh, Chikadze certainly held his own in the second round, but I think this was more Barbosa uh, showing exactly what he could do. Uh, going into the third round, uh, we see that Barbosa actually got some damage over his eye. Again, he comes out uh, the more aggressive, landing jabs, firing knees. Uh, Chikadze lands a huge right though, and you can see that Barbosa is rocked uh, Chikadze uh, follows up lands uh, digs to the body uh, and then we see another right hand uh, this time by Barbosa which uh, which kind of staggers um, Chikadze he's uh, he's able to to get the fight to the ground though and get a top position Barbosa goes for the for the ankle pick uh, it's, it's not there but that, that forces Chikadze to rethink his strategy of getting the, the sub uh, he pulls away, uh, allows um, Edson Barbosa to, to get back up, uh, lands some big punches on the way up, uh, tries to go for the choke, but sees it, it's not there. Um, both fighters then return to the feet, and just as uh, as Edson Barbosa is back on, 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 his, on his two feet, Chikata lands a huge right, staggers uh, Barbosa, uh, Chikadze goes for the walk off. The referee absolutely agrees. Uh, this uh, Barbosa may have been on his feet, but the the lights were on. But there was certainly nobody at home, and Chikadze gets uh, another hallmark victory, three knockouts in a row. And in his post fight press conference, he uh, he actually called out Max Holloway, uh, knowing that he's probably not next in line for a title shot, which is ridiculous. Now I mean, you don't go seven and all beating the kind of fight that uh, the uh, Chikadze's beat the the likes of Cub Swabs and the likes of Edson Barboza and not be in the mix for a, a title picture but it is very kind of uh, stacked at the top of that division and there's a lot of congestion uh, so um, a fight with Max Holloway absolutely makes sense for me anyway that's uh, that's uh, fight now Barbosa versus Chikadza all wrapped up now uh, next week we've got a, an early showing for us in the UK 9 o'clock main card for us uh, this time headlined by Derek Brunson and Darren Till in the middleweight division Darren Till looking to uh, to uh, really cement his position in the middleweight division uh, kind of been at the top of the card in a couple of divisions now but uh, just fell at the final hurdle and he's looking to be a, a champion and, and really push for a, a title shot in the very, very near future. And then uh, in the common event, we've got uh, Tom Aspinall uh, taking on Sergey Spivak. Spivak taking this match on on a pretty short notice. Uh, but the more interesting fight, for, for especially for, for, for myself and Carlos, is uh, the, the debut of uh, Paddy Pimlet, uh, the, the Cage Warriors champion, uh, the the Scouser. We, everybody in the UK loves uh, Paddy Pimlet, so definitely listen along next week to find out how he goes in his uh, debut against Luigi Vendramina. 
Uh, but that's all from me. Uh, Mags, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at PodfatherMags. Follow Carlos at Kirby underscore Carlson. Definitely go and check out the rest of the content on the amazing networks we're part of here at uh, Visionaries Global Media at The Chair Shot and right here on Radio Techers. Uh, thank you all for listening. And that is the end. Time. He's trying to finish.